All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been going over Murox ASP.NET 4.6 with C Sharp 2015, sixth edition PowerPoints, and we're up to the beginning of um, section four of five in the book. And section four is entitled Finishing an ASP.NET Application. This section consists of four chapters, chapters 19, 20, 21 and 22. Chapter 19, which we are going to go over right now, shows how to use a secure connection for an application. Chapter 20 shows how to authenticate and authorize application users. Chapter 21 shows how to use email and custom error pages and how to deal with problems that can occur, can occur rather when users click the back button in their browsers. And chapter 22 is on deploying an application. We are not, repeat, not going to go over any of these chapters as a class. So the presentation that I give will be the only thing that's provided, basically. All right. So chapter 19, which starts in the book on page 697, how to secure a web application. And security is of paramount importance. All right. When you look at IT and you start to look especially at things like jobs that are available and the like, You'll notice if you look long enough that there are typically a lot, and I mean a lot of jobs that are available that are security related in one way or the other. And security is an all-encompassing term. For instance, and, and this is not a hardware class, so this is as hardware-ish as Jeff gets, people talk about firewalls. And if I ask any of you to define a firewall, a lot of people would define it as it's a piece of hardware that basically keeps your machine secure. And I would not disagree with that. But that's kind of incomplete because a firewall also consists of software that keeps people out where they shouldn't be. And there's a human firewall. So when if you've ever seen the movie, I think it was called Breached, years ago with, I can't remember the gentleman's name now, is it Robert Hayes or something like that, who worked for the CIA and was leaking information to the Russians. Well, he breached the human firewall, all right? So security is all-encompassing. It's one of the most important concerns, not just for e-commerce, but for any kind of application. To secure a web application, you must make sure that private data that's sent between a client and a server can't be deciphered. So in other words, you don't want to send it in what's called clear text. Rather, all right, you want to send it in cipher text where it has been encrypted. So to accomplish this, this chapter shows how to use the Internet Protocol SSL. Now, even with that, and first let's go through quickly our objectives. Our applied objective Develop a web app that uses one or more secure pages and test the application with IIS Express. Knowledge objectives. There are four. In general terms, explain how secure connections work. In general terms, explain how digital certificates work. Explain how the strength of a digital secure certificate affects its level of security. And describe how IIS provides for working with secure connections. Well, to start with, Okay, many people, when they start talking about secure applications, look at this up here and they see HTTPS. All right, HTTPS for years has stood for Secure Socket Layer. Okay, and what it means is that the attempt is at least made to make your data that's being sent over the internet more secure. All right? And the S in there stands for secure socket layer. But more or less, secure socket layer, the, the verbiage has been replaced with TLS, which is transport layer security. All right? Some places still call it SSL. Some call it TS, TLS SSL. But when you use this, the browser encrypts all data that's sent to the server and decrypts all data received from the server. Conversely, 
the server encrypts all data sent to the browser and decrypts all data that's received from the browser. You use TLS slash SSL because you're able to verify that a server or client is who they claim to be. So the URL starts with HTTPS instead of HTTP. And with many browsers, it also shows a lock icon. We haven't seen that yet. So this is designed to show a web page that uses TLS slash SSL to transfer data between a server and a client using a secure connection. All right, so if it starts with HTTPS up in the address bar rather than HTTP, you're transmitting over a secure connection. With a regular HTTP, with a non-HTTPS connection, all data is sent as unencrypted text. What that means is if a hacker is able to intercept that data, since it's in what's called clear text, it's easy to read. But with a secure connection, all data that's transferred between client and server is encrypted. The data can be intercepted, but the hacker won't be able to read it without breaking the encryption code. So you want to make it as hard for somebody to break in, look at, and use your data as you possibly can. Okay, I mean, bottom line is, that's the goal, that's what you're trying to do here. Okay, so this figure shows the, t the types of digital secure certificates. With a server certificate, those are issued to trusted, what are called trusted servers, so that client computers can connect to them using secure connections. With a client certificate, they're issued to cl custom clients, to trusted clients, I should say, so server computers can confirm their identity. Now, a couple terms that are in here. When you deploy an application to a production server, you'll need to use a digital secure certificate. Digital secure certificates serve two purposes. First, they establish the identity of the server or the identity of the client. And second, they provide information that's needed to actually encrypt the data before it's transmitted over the internet. By default, Browsers are configured to accept certificates that come from trusted sources. If a browser doesn't recognize a certificate as coming from a trusted source, it informs the user. The user can then determine whether or not it should be considered valid. If the user still chooses to accept the certificate, a secure connection is established. Sometimes, a server may want the client to authenticate. This isn't as common is server authentication, but it's used occasionally. Now, we will talk in the next chapter about both authentication and authorization. Most people, when they think of authentication, they think of, oh, that's like when I log in in the morning and it asks me for my Windows login and password. And that is basically what authentication is is authentication is who are you who you say you are authorization is once you've been authenticated what rights do you have so you can go online and you can find and i i have no idea where this would be but as an example we could go out to google and we could come in here and let's let's go into google images which i've been using quite a bit lately and we'll have authentication versus authorization All right, so authentication. Is the user allowed to use the application to begin with? Again, that's typically a login password type of thing. That's authentication. Authorization, what is the user's role? I've given you this example before, and I've said that as an example, a bank teller has a different type of authorization than a personal banker. Typically, a bank teller is only authorized to do deposits, withdrawals, and show balances, whereas a personal banker can look at a lot of your individual personal information if you've got an account with that bank. They can open accounts for you. They can close accounts for you. They can handle all sorts of different 
personal items for you because they're authorized with a different role. All right. The other thing that I grabbed on here, just so you know, was an article from vanish.org. Okay, and I just found this again by Googling, and I typed in SSL. So it says SSL, let's blow this up a bit. SSL stands for Secure Sockets Layer. It commonly uses port 443 to connect your computer to a secure server on the Internet. SSL is most often used for transmitting credit card, tax, banking, and personal information to a business server somewhere. This is important. When you think about if you've got an online store, not every page in your online store has to be encrypted. So in other words, if you're putting items in a cart, that page doesn't necessarily have to be encrypted or HTTPS. But once you get to a checkout where you're going to give a, a payment information or you're going to use PayPal, then that would be HTTPS. So it says here both SSL and TLS strive to create confidential connections across the Internet. With few exceptions, it is not possible for a, quote, regular hacker, unquote, to break into an SSL or TLS connection. The encryption technology is as reliable as it currently can be. So, with SSL, as it says, SSL and TLS both use cryptography to provide authentication and security to Internet communications. All right? So, cryptography is basically the ability to go in and encrypt. So, why do they create a new protocol when there's only minor differences between them? The truth is... It's easier to break SSL with mistakes that occur on an HTTP level. All right? The purpose of TLS is to replace SSL because SSL has some unsolved security issues. All right? There's that lock icon that they talk about. It says it's not just a picture. When you click on it, you will see details of the site's security. All web pages asking you for sensitive information should be secured using SSL slash TLS. Now, so what is sensitive information? Well, that's typically decided by the company that's going to be sending the information. You know, kind of a litmus test is if you're not sure, it's sensitive. Okay? All right, let's continue on. I am at 13 minutes, so I'm going to go a little bit longer and break this up into at least two different lectures. Now, there's probably more information on pages 700 and 701 than I've just given you. I augmented it and tried to give my own information. All right, here's some common certification authorities. Semantic is one that, you know, that, that I have used. So, again, authentication determines whether a server or client is who they claim to be. When the browser makes an initial attempt to communicate with a server over a secure connection that uses TLS slash SSL, the server authenticates itself. In some cases, the server may also request that the browser authenticate itself. To use TLS slash SSL in your web connection, you must purchase one of these, a digital certificate from one of these authorities, also called a CA or Certification Authority, or there are other ones. VeriSign is another one that's not even listed in here. A Certification Authority then is a company that issues and manages security credentials. They must, to verify the information, the Certification Authority must check with a Registration Authority or RA, to verify the requester's information. TLS slash SSL is built into all major browsers and web servers. The strength of TLS slash SSL refers to the length of the generated key created in the encryption process. The strength that's used depends on the strength of the certificate, the strength supported by the web server, and the strength supported by the browser. Most 
certificates sold today provide up to 256 bit TLS SSL strength. It's nearly impossible to break this, but not all browsers support it. If the browser doesn't support it, they will use the maximum strength that it does support, which then typically would be 128 bit encryption. So, how does all this stuff work? All right, this pretty much is what I just went over with you. All right, what you see on the screen right here, as mentioned, is the dialog that box that's displayed when you run a TLS slash SSL connection. When you create an app that runs under IIS, it's assigned a port number on the local server. So in other words, and this is the one that we're going to actually look at for this chapter, and it's, it's a, a sh the shopping cart app, but what it's showing here, in fact, let's run it. It'll probably make it easier. This project is configured to use SSL. To avoid SSL warnings in a browser, you can choose to trust this. Well, since this is, would be in a testing mode, do I want to trust it? I would say yes. Now, I will be asked every time. So it says you're about to install this. Do you want to install this certificate? Sure. All right. So now, as we go through this, this is the port number that they're talking about off of local host all right but what I want to show you and it's going to probably take a while for this to load is what happens as we move from page to page all right so we'll come back to that in just a moment so when you use TSL SSL with an application that runs under IIS you set the SSL enabled property for the project to true then the secure URL for the app is displayed in the SSL URL property. Normally, this is going to use port 44300, which is the standard port for HTTPS when you use IIS Express. The first time that you run this, you might see something like this. Well, the first time you run it, you're going to see this, and we already saw that. If you click the yes button, all right, then it is displayed in there. And as it says, if you click the no button for, for when you're asked, it'll be treated as though it's untrusted. Okay, so if you don't trust it, this is what's going to come up on the system. All right. So let's see if that indeed did come up by now. All right, it is up. So let's say that we grab one of these Austin Powers. We type in a one. We add it to the cart. Okay, there's our cart. All right. Now everything is cool. Now we go to checkout. Now notice it says your connection is not private. It's trying to create a private connection. All right, but it says that right now it's not guaranteed that it will be. Well, I don't have the certification authority, et cetera, set up in here but normally that would be put in as an HTTPS all right so the author is doing the best that they can to show you what's going on as we work our way through this hopefully that made sense to everybody all right so to request a secure connection you must use an absolute URL that specifies HTTPS as the protocol, something like is shown right here. Once you've established that connection, then you can use relative URLs to continue using the secure connection. If you want to return to an unsecured connection, you code an absolute URL with HTTP. Again, not every single page on the uh, application has to be HTTPS. Only the ones where sensitive information like credit card, password, etc., information, social security number, whatever would be considered sensitive, that's the only time that you have to be using this. 
All right, instead of storing the application's path in each URL, you can store secure and unsecure paths in the app settings section of the web.config file. That way, if the path happens to change, you can change them in just one location. Now, if you want to force, so there's the app settings right there. If you want to force um, a page to use a secure connection, so again, when the page requires the user to enter things like passwords, credit card data, etc., you should make sure it's operating on a secure connection. To do that, you should check to see if the is secure connection attribute has been set. It's the property of the HTTP request object, and you should do this in the load event handler. It'll return true if the current connection is true and false if it is not secure. All right. In addition, you've got the URL of the current request. So if the page isn't using a secure connection, it should switch to a secure connection to protect the, the, the privacy of the associated data. If you're using anything other than IIS Express, so if you were running this on your own server, or maybe it was a Linux-based server, for example, you can switch to a secure connection by replacing the HTT protocol in the URL with HTTPS and then redirecting the browser to the new URL. If you want to get the current URL, you can use the URL property of the HTTP object, which is what's shown here. All right? So here is the code that would force the page to use a secure connection. <clears throat> and here's how you would replace it. Now, the next thing that's discussed here is they go over the shopping cart application that uses TLS SSL. And that's the last three or four pages of the chapter. I want to talk about that in some more depth and breadth of coverage. So I'm going to stop the lecture right here and continue on with part two in just a couple minutes.